so let's continue our discussion <coughs> about newton's law of gravitation so agenda of this lecture is to briefly recap uh, various important concept and formulas that we have introduced in the previous lecture as well as uh, we will discuss two equivalence principle by galileo and newton so let's start with the brief recap so first uh, we have introduced the newton's gravitational field denoted by is g at a point x for a n number of point particles the expressions are given here xi primes are the position vector of this individual point particle mi is are the gravitational mass or charge produced by each of these point particles and this is a conservative uh, field so we can mm, write g as a gradient of a, a scalar potential and furthermore uh, we can generalize all this expression for a continuous distribution which is shown here both the expression for g and the uh, scalar potential for a continuous distributions is given here and xi prime is the position vector of the infinite small volume element within the uh, extended body and we are integrating over all x prime uh, as shown in this uh, from this, we can easily derive the following that del dot g is minus 4 pi g newton times uh, rho. Rho is the density of the gravitational mass of the extended distribution. This is nothing but the Gauss law. Also, we end up with the Pomodoro equation for the scalar potential. That is the Laplacian of uh, this pi is 4 pi g newton. And we also discuss various important properties like existence, uniqueness of solution of this Pomodoro equation as Arnshaw theorem, etc in the previous lecture. Then uh, we wrote down the expression for the gravitational potential energy and for continuous distribution, it can be written in the following way, uh, in terms of uh, rho, the density and the scalar potential, phi. Uh, also, we uh, discussed that uh, the Newtonian theory is not a theory, uh, does not give you the notion of the gravitational field but we have to introduce the gravitational field when we are discussing the uh, relativistic version of it. And we uh, have done a uh, heuristic computation of the energy uh, stored in the gravitational field, even working in this uh, Newtonian theory. And we arrive at this equation. Keep in mind that uh, we made uh, some ad hoc assumption while deriving this expression. But we will later derive it more systematically, and we will see that under the appropriate non derivative limit, uh, it will uh, match with this expression that we derived here. So, in short, the uh, total uh, gravitational energy will be stored uh, in general inside the matter as well as in the gravitational field, although uh, Newtonian uh, theory does not uh, give. Uh, or tell us about the concept of gravitational field, but we will uh, later learn about it in more detail. So, and uh, then we also introduce this multiple expansion. So, if we are measuring potential uh, at a point P, uh, which is very, very far away from all the points uh, inside this extended distribution, then we can tailor expand uh, this uh, integral. And uh, we end up with this uh, systematic expansion. First is the monopole contribution, uh, which is shown here, which is basically due to the point particle of the same mass m uh, centered at the uh, center of mass of the extended body. And uh, that is generating this part of the potential. The second term is the dipole contribution. In fact, uh, we have shown that it vanishes above the center of mass for this case. And then we have a quadrupole contribution. And this uij is a quadrupolar tensor, which is symmetric rank two tensor, and so on and so forth. So ij here takes three values. They are denoting these uh, components uh, of these various vectors and tensor quantities, and repeated indices are summed over as we discussed in the previous lecture. Now we are done with the recap. We will discuss the two equivalence principles that are uh, put forward by Galileo and Newton. So we will start with the Galilean principle of equivalence. So Galileo uh, observed that if you place two point particles in the arc uniform uh, gravitational field, they uh, experience same acceleration due to the force of gravity. Uh, or, and their motion is identical 
under the influence of art gravitational field. And from that, he concludes the following that uh, suppose uh, we are doing an experiment in a windowless closed lab and you don't have any access to the outside. And first, you, this lab is placed on the earth and you assume that uh, the, the earth gravitational field is uniformly acting on entire dimension of this lab and uh, entire duration of the experiment and you are performing some mechanical experiment uh, suppose you are throwing a projectile so it will uh, experience a downward acceleration uh, minus g due to the earth gravitational pull now uh, consider that the same windowless lab is uh, accelerating with the same value of this acceleration g uh, in the upward direction shown here with respect to an inertial frame that is attached uh, again on the arc and you are performing the same uh, experiment uh, inside this uh, lab, then we know that uh, because it's uh, accelerating uh, with the value of g, so this projectile will uh, experience a pseudo force or inertial force in the downward direction, that is it will face this minus g pseudo force. And Galileo says that that these two scenarios are equivalent. That is, motion under inertial force is equivalent to a motion under uniform gravity under any mechanical test. So, just to iterate, there are some key assumptions made here that the gravitational uh, uh, force remains uniform across the breadth of this uh, object or the lab uh, and over the entire duration of the experiment. Also, you are only performing the mechanical test. So now this Galilean uh, principle of equivalence is a precursor to Einstein equivalence uh, principle, uh, where he generalizes this statement uh, for any kind of test, be it electrical, mechanical, uh, optical, and under any kind of test, this equivalence hold, or more uh, precisely, so uh, if you have a, a, a freely falling uh, a frame or lab uh, inside a uniform gravitational field, then the laws of physics uh, in that reference frame of the lab will be identical to the uh, laws of special relativity in an inertial reference frame. And that actually helps us to define or identify this freely falling uh, frame as a local inertial frame. Uh, which is quoted here. Remember, this local is important because if you turn on the gravitational field, it varies across point to point. But uh, imagine that uh, across a point, or uh, you consider a very uh, small neighborhood of the point, you can approximate the gravitational field as a uniform uh, gravitational field. Uh, that is, if you perform this uh, experiment uh, across that point, so gravitational field uh, will remain uniform uh, uh, over the entire dimension of your lab and so, so on, as well as over the entire duration of the uh, experiment, especially if you are doing in uh, the experiment for a shorter interval of time, uh, then you will see that gravitational force remains uh, uniform, and then uh, you can identify this uh, freely falling different frame across that uh, point locally uh, with the uh, inertial frame. And uh, there's a very important point uh, to keep in mind that there is no global inertial frame uh, uh, when you uh, turn off the gravity, but you can always define a local inertial frame uh, as a freely falling reference frame. Now we discuss the Newton's principle of equivalence. So remember that uh, we have make a very uh, conscious effort to distinguish between the gravitational mass and the inertial mass. Inertial mass is come from the Newton's second law of which you measure using uh, say a beam balance. So Newton's uh, principle of equivalence says that uh, uh, they are basically the same. So M of G is equal to M of I. M of G is you know, the gravitational mass which enters into the formula of the uh, Newton's gravitational law and M of I comes from the Newton's second law. And uh, this uh, uh, statement is also supported by various um, observations. We encourage you to look uh, uh, into those various experimental tests of this uh, yeah, equation. So now the equation of motion for a point object in a gravitational field 
you can write it down. This is like m of i times the acceleration is equal to minus m of g times uh, uh, gradient of this uh, gravitational potential. And if mg and m of i is uh, equal, then you can cancel this m i and mg both sides from this equation, and you end up of this, which is quoted in this box. So remember the point object, the assumption, the point of uh, about this point object is very important because you are canceling this m of i, m of g. If this is an extended object, it will be under an integral, and you cannot make this cancellation. Of course. Uh, in the extended object, uh, the gravitation force will vary from point to point. So this uh, assumption about the point object is very important, which also saying that uh, whatever you are doing uh, in the experiment or in your uh, uh, frame of reference, the gravitational force uh, should uh, remain uniform. And that is why this cancellation will happen. So now, uh, if we think about these two equivalence principles, a natural question arises that uh, can we not uh, distinguish gravity from an inertial force? What is the telltale signature of gravity? And uh, the answer is uh, the tidal force. We all know about the tidal force. Uh, we observe them in nature and even in various astrophysical phenomena. And this tidal force uh, gives the uh, telltale signature of the uh, gravity. That is gravity manifest as a tidal force. And that we will uh, discuss in the next lecture. Today we will end here. And thank you.